What's up guys, welcome to another video. I'm gonna be taking you guys through an individual technical session. So this could be done by any player, any position. There might be some drills that might be a little bit more specific for my fullbacks and wingers, but pretty much everything that I'm gonna be going through can be applied to any position. This is just gonna be sharpening up on some small things that I think every player needs to be you know, good at, whether that's dribbling, the first touch, and just getting more comfortable with the ball and being able to use both feet, of course. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment down, and subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel, and I'm trying to get to 100K. So let's see if we can do it. What's up, guys? So the first thing that we're going to do is a five-minute jog around the field. This is a great way to kind of mentally lock in and get ready for the session and just to warm up the body. After that, I usually move into some foam rolling. So grab a foam roller, foam roll your calves, your hammies, your glutes, and your quads, and you can even do your upper back. And that kind of just really loosens up my body. I always like to do the jog first, just to kind of get my body warmed up. And then once I start foam rolling, I feel like it just really you know, loosens everything up. And then I do a little bit of dynamic stretching and mobility. I'll do some 90-90s. I'll do uh, some leg swings along the fence. And then that's when I start you know, getting the ball involved. One of my favorite ways to warm up as well, another alternative is let's say you just don't want to jog around the field. You can also do another variation that I've been doing with a lot of my clients is just juggling a couple of times, kicking the ball up in the air, controlling it, dribbling around just at a low intensity, doing different skill moves and doing that for five minutes. That's a great and alternative way to warm up as well. As long as you're moving around at like a pretty low intensity, just getting the body warmed up, I think that's still a great way of warming up. And I think a lot of people prefer that than just having to jog around the field, maybe with the ball. Um, but both ways are a great way to warm up. You can even bike if you wanted to or even walk. But as long as you warm up your body, that's the most important part. After we do the warm up, we're gonna be moving into a little bit of juggling. So I always like to spend about five to 10 minutes juggling with a smaller size soccer ball, whether that's a tennis ball or just a small like size one or two soccer ball. This really warms up my first touch and just my foot to eye coordination because with a smaller ball, you just have to really focus and just make sure that every single touch that you take is perfect because as you notice is that if you make one small like adjustment or just take one bad touch, it's really hard to recover from it. Whereas with the bigger regular size soccer ball, you might get away with it and be able to recover even after you take a bad touch. So I like to spend anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Sometimes I even spend more time depending uh, on the session, how I feel, if I have the time. And then I switch over and move into the regular soccer ball. And that's where I'll do several different juggling variations, starting with just the laces. I'll then go into maybe some single leg uh, just with the toe and work on that balance it's a great way to just also work on those stabilizer muscles because you just have to balance on one leg, just get more comfortable. I'll then move into some inside the foot juggling, which is a great mobility exercise to be honest. If you think about it, if you have trouble like bringing your leg up like that, it probably means that you have tight hips. After doing inside the foot juggling, I then move into outside the foot juggling where that's a very you know complicated and hard variation for a lot of people. But what I tell everybody is just do the drop and catch method. So just get used to the movement. First, just do it without the ball. Just do the motion. If you're not used to it, just go through the motion. After that, just toss up the ball, hit it, and catch. Just and get used to it. If you're, if you, especially if you're struggling with any juggling variation, if you're, you're just learning how to like, you know, hit with the laces. Just hit it, catch. Hit it, catch. Then try to do two in the row, catch, and then move your way up. And that's just one of my tips to get better at that. So after doing like outside the foot juggling, I'll go back to the laces and I'll do like one low, one high. So I'll, I'll pop it up high, control low, pop it up high, control low. And then I'll move into maybe another juggling variation where I'll kick it up high and then try to keep on juggling. So it's not a one low, one high. This one is just kick it up high as I can. I'll either bring it down you know, or try to keep juggling it. And then after that, then I'll move into some dribbling. And a lot of people are really against like, you know, ball mastery and cone dribbling because they don't think it's like realistic. So I still do think that there's always a place to work on, you know, doing cone drills and ball mastery. It's a great starting point to learn a skill move and just to get that repetition in. So once you do go in the game, that's when you start applying it. And 
I always tell people, I was like, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna feel more, a lot more comfortable and more confident doing a skill move if you've done it 10,000 times versus if you've never done it, if you or if you rarely do it, right? Of course, it's not, you're not beating a player, but I think it's a good place to kind of master the move and get more confident and just to, you know, be able to do it with speed. You know, imagine doing a skill move every single day for one month. You know, obviously when you first start off, it's probably gonna be slow. You're gonna be a little bit inconsistent with it. But if you stick to it and you do it every day, you're probably going to get really good at it. You're, it's probably going to be, you're probably going to start off slow. And then by, you know, end of the month, you're probably going to be able to do it really fast. And imagine doing that skill move for years, right? You know, Ronaldo, he's so good at those scissors and he's been doing it his whole life. So imagine all the repetitions that he's got it in. And that's why I feel like he's just so quick. It's because he's done thousands and thousands of repetitions. After that, we're gonna go into a little bit more of game realistic dribbling, so more position specific. Like I said, I do play fullback. I'm gonna take a big touch and work on, you know, performing fake shots, fake crosses. I feel like that's gonna help me, you know, create space and separation from defenders. So all I'm gonna do is take a big touch down the line, pretend that I'm gonna cross and stop the ball, and then re-accelerate. Learning how to stop and go is a simple and effective way to lose your mark and to create space for yourself. You don't necessarily have to create enough space to dribble past the player, but if you can you know, create just a little bit of space, it might be able to help you find a pass or get rid of the ball so you don't lose it. After that, we're gonna be moving into a little bit of finishing. So what I like to do is combine a couple different aspects. So we're gonna be working on that first touch. We're gonna to juggle the ball a couple times. Depending on where you play on the field, let's say you play more of a winger, you can definitely start more out wide. If you're someone who plays maybe the center mid position, maybe you can start in the middle. Um, and if you play striker, same thing, you can start in the middle. So all I'd like to do is you know, get a couple soccer balls. If you have one, that's fine, you could do it too. So juggle it, have your back facing the goal, pop it up, bring the ball down, take it a nice good touch, turn, beat the defender, you know, create different situations in your head, and then take a shot on goal. You're gonna be practicing using both feet. This is just a simple and effective way to just work on you know, dribbling, first touch and finishing all in one drill just kind of finish it off and that's pretty much the whole session guys it's very simple and it's very effective and this is something that you can do by yourself if I would honestly add another thing that you can do if you have a wall or if you have a rebounder is you know you can work on some maybe two touch you know two touch passing one touch passing you know I don't have a, a rebounder wall or you know a partner so I, and I don't even have a wall, so I don't really have the ability to work on that. But you can also use a bench. So I have a bench right behind me. You can also use a bench to pass it off. I hope you guys enjoyed that individual session. If you did, please leave a like, comment down below, you know, what your favorite part is, or if you want to make, if you want me to make more of these types of videos. And thank you guys again. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. As always, this is a great day to get better. And I'll see you guys in the next video.